Next, I would like to invite Adaf Hussain Bani, Director of Program of Kashmir Institute of International Relations, on stage. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. First of all, I would like to commend the uh, government of Azad Kashmir for conducting this workshop. From since morning, we have been listening to different presentations, and I think uh, from human rights violations to demographic change, each of the speakers has dealt with this subject and has done justice to what they know about the subject and what that. I will be rather a different way all uh, present myself. You know, we know all about the human rights violations and these days everything is documented and everything you people read in papers, you uh, go through the videos, through graphics and all these things, you know all about that. Uh, the time is, what should we do? The actual thing is, what is our duty? How we can go ahead? How can we uh, perform under these conditions? You know, in Kashmir, there was time when the militancy violence speak. I, as a young man, took the arms and resisted. And then, gradually and slowly, our youth, they started learning through process. They used different means of resistance. You know that we were, uh, previously we were discussing that there is very little written on Kashmir here. But I'll tell you, in Indian occupied Kashmir, our young writers have written a number of books on the current conflict. They have documented each and every violation. They have written fictions on it. And they are not only through writing the uh, uh, books and articles on this and making films on this, those have also, through their paintings, through their other things, uh, concerts, they express their dissent against the Indian occupation. That was what, and nowadays you see the students and colleges, universities and schools coming on roads and resisting the Indian occupation. That's all you know. What is our responsibility? What is the responsibility of government of Pakistan, government of Azad Jammu and Kashmir, and we as civil society, as people of Azad Kashmir, as members of the civil society? What is our responsibility? How we can contribute, this is the thing. The first of all, the University of Azad Jammu and Kashmir, the uh, Nepal University organized a very big conference last year and gave opportunity to lots of young people from occupied Kashmir to present themselves. This was a beginning at that. And then University of Azad Kashmir also had a very good conference in uh, uh, December, uh, October 2016. Uh, that was also uh, a step towards creating an awareness among the university students what they can do. You know, there are now stated mechanisms which you as persons knowing the law, or if you are not knowing the law, I am not a law knowing person, I am not a law graduate, but still I use those uh, available international mechanisms which are available. We should be equipped by that. If you use those international mechanisms, they are available to each and everybody. There is no need, there should be an organization, there should be an organized group or anything to do it. Any individual can use those mechanisms. You can lodge those complaints. You can disseminate this information to those international mechanisms. I tell you the success of that. Last summer, when the bullets and pellets were raining in Kashmir, even in those circumstances, when internet was shut down, when social media was gagged and media was gagged, even then the Kashmiri youth managed to send those pictures out and their write-ups out. And those reached to we people and we people disseminated those informations to the United Nations Human Rights Commissioner and other special procedures. And the result was that when it's on record now that uh, Ambassador is now Foreign Secretary of uh, Pakistan, Ambassador Tamina Janjwa, when she went to met to the UN, UN Human Rights Commissioner about the ongoing situation that is happening in Kashmir, you are not doing anything. Uh, he said, Madam, I have all these on my table. I am going to make a statement on this. So these all things were on his table. This was done by the people like you. So you can use these mechanisms. This is how you can create awareness in the UN mechanisms. 
Number two, the universities can collaborate with the international universities, your groups. You can disseminate information to them. You can create awareness by that. You can collaborate with the international NGOs. There's, if you Google, you go there, there's everywhere an opportunity where you can paste your information, whatever you can, you want to send them. You can send to them. That will be registered there. That's what you can do. That is the responsibility that lies upon you, that is available to you without harming anything. You can disseminate that information because the people in Indian occupied Kashmir, when they use these UN mechanisms, they face reprisals from the state. There is every time a reprisal. We have lost so many human rights advocates in Kashmir because of these reprisals who use these mechanisms. But you don't have that threat here. You can use this. Information is there. Information is on media. Information on newspapers. If you don't have information, we can. Our institute is always monitoring these documents, all, all these human rights violations, we document them. We send to the international NGOs also. We send these to whatever is our capacity. We reach out to the people. And that has made some impact, if not at all. Most recently, there are success which I, nothing has happened. Recently, you have seen, uh, now, some three days back, uh, 15 days back, there was a tweet from the UN a Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression and Opinion, David K. He tweeted that freedom of expression uh, in Kashmir is under threat. And after six days, two UN Special Rapporteurs, David K. and Michael Frost, they issued a statement regarding the gag of internet, social media in Kashmir, and wrote to the government of India that government of India should uh, lift the ban on internet because it uh, infringes upon the right to freedom of, ex uh, freedom of expression and opinion. So these are the mechanisms which are readily available to you people which you can do. The next thing which the Azad Kashmir government can do or this forum which has been uh, created, this can do to generate a Kashmir resistance literature. But uh, the President saw in his inaugural address in the morning, he also entered to that and thereafter other uh, opinion makers also made a reference to that. We have to make uh, those things available for ourselves. If you go, you see how Indians are demonizing Pakistan. So Pakistanis will have to create a narrative to, to demonize India in the international forum. I always say to the people, there is no dearth of uh, that we don't have any support at international level. I, I uh, respectfully disagree with those people who say that there is no support for Kashmir at international level. I say there is support for Kashmir at international level. Everybody feels what is happening in Kashmir. Everybody shows its concern what is happening in Kashmir. Why we lack is that the Pakistan's position has been demonized by India and the international arena. Everywhere, in civil society, of the Pakistanis are uh, treated as terrorists everywhere. So we need to change that, change that discourse. You have to research what India is doing to its minorities, what, what Indian state is doing this time. You have lots of uh, those uh, things available which you can disseminate to the international world and that, that way you can create a constituency for yourself, for your support. The Azad Kashmir government can create awareness like these seminars and all that, but one thing uh, which I think from a lo long time I have been telling to my colleagues, to the political leaders in Azad Kashmir, that the diaspora, we have the people in diaspora who are whatever they are doing, they are doing of their own, they do, they, they do protest, they organize seminars, they organize conferences, but the thing, the young generation of our diaspora is disconnected from this conflict. They don't know even ABCD of this conflict. They are not with you. They don't uh, have any, anything to do with it. So we need to connect with them. That is the most important thing. They can tell the new generation of the Europe what actually they want. They, they will communicate in their own language. They know their style. They know their way of doing. We cannot say that India came in 1947, this and then nobody is listening to it. This is a long way. We go to history and start telling history. And when the time is two minutes and two minutes, you go for history. You can't this history. Those young people know how to do it. But we have to educate them. We have to take on board. This is what this 
all the research firms can do. They have, we have to engage those young people. They can manage it. They can muster their support. They can galvanize their support. And by, the, by that way, we can get the support from the political governments. This is not just we have one, two, three empties, and they are coming there. We say that they will support us, and by that way we can create any impression. That's not possible unless and until that their general population is aware about it. That's the one thing that Azad Kashmir government can do. They can facilitate the visits of the Azad Kashmir university students who are capable advocates. There are lots of people who can present their case in a better way. There are young parliamentarians who can go, who can present their case in a better way than anybody else. So those uh, groups should be formed, they should be sent abroad, they should be given the opportunity to present their case as an international environment. This just has twofold uh, effects. One is that that way they will have the ownership of the conflict. You, it, un, until and unless you give these young people an opportunity, how you will give them the ownership of this conflict? They should have the ownership of this conflict, at least and then they will feel the responsibility what they have to do. Number three, the, the diplomatic support which we want, that is the responsibility of the government of Pakistan. Our work is to sensitize the international opinion. What are the international litigities, international law, what international law says, what international law does not say. But no law, no law debars us from going and to advocating our cause, convincing people. There is no law at international level or national level that will deny us this access. We know India is a denial mode. They will keep it. What India is doing, that's there. But you have to expose the India's uh, what are the disadvantages of India? Expose those disadvantages and what advantages you have. Take away those advantages, go to the international forum and keep on telling government of Pakistan their responsibilities. That is also our responsibility. We have to uh, time and again knock the doors of the government of Pakistan, the officials of Pakistan, the political parties of Pakistan, the unfortunate part. If you see, what happened in 2016 in Kashmir? There was response from whole of India, from Indian civil society, from Tamil Nadu to Kerala to Calcutta. We have seen lots of protests all over India by students who came out, who protest against these brutalities. Though they do not uh, accept what we want, uh, we want to uh, get away from India and we want this, but at least they condemned the Indian attitude in Kashmir. But we did not see the same response in Pakistan. We did not see the response from the political parties of Pakistan. As President Saab was right to say, how much time the political leaders in their sermons give to Kashmir? How many time they give? They don't give any time to the Kashmir. If, if for any reason they give, it is to take a point on its opponent. But not to a uh, prize. Uh, uh, in one of the meetings, one of the leaders of political party uh, he was very dissatisfied with my presentation because I said that I have been touring the Azad Kashmir universities. I have met the students in different universities. The students uh, have a different thinking. They have a different uh, understanding. They don't see uh, this conflict as their conflict because their leadership has not given them any narrative of the conflict. Because they think this is now a, perhaps a, government level thing is if the government has to do or some institutions have to do, we have to do nothing. It is the responsibility of political leaders to tell the people that it is their responsibility. The political party leadership has to come out about Kashmir clearly. I will not hesitate to say here, I uh, also said in the TV program, that India in India each and every political leader has the same stance on Kashmir. They have the same stance on Kashmir. When they say anything, they say in the parliament, their uh, information minister, their home minister, their external affairs minister come up with the same statement. But here we have only fixed foreign, sp foreign ministry spokesperson to give a statement on Kashmir. Neither our minister of information comes with any statement on that, nor anybody else comes with a strong statement on that, which we should be a policy statement. That we should keep on telling the government of Pakistan that it is your responsibility to master the international support on Kashmir, but we should not shun our responsibility that just to create awareness at international level. Thank you very much.